it is. All right, staring down the question number five. All right, so I found something kind of similar to it. I was actually hoping NC could help me with a couple things in it. This guy's and that, that's a little complicated. All right, so the quadrupole moment. So um, first thing we can talk about a dipole moment. A dipole moment is something, <sighs> you'll see, we'll talk about it. Um, but a dipole moment is something that's like pretty straightforward that everybody has a fair deal of. A dipole moment is something where you have like, you know, two electron or two charges, you know, something that looks like that, right? <clears throat> and you can kind of treat this like, um, like one thing. You can talk about the dipole as like one type of charge. So you can talk about the electric field anywhere around the dipole moment. Um, and there's formula that like simplify a dipole moment and everything like that. Um, so then we have another kind of more peculiar, oh, I guess I didn't have to do that. We have another kind of more peculiar case where uh, in a higher pole, it'd be a higher pole moment is what we call it. And that's a quadrupole where there's four points now. So here, this is a positive X, positive X minus, or X, what am I talking about? Uh, proton, proton, electron, electron type of deal. You know, we're char we'll just talk of charges in general. Um, <clears throat> So what can happen is these can kind of get squished a little bit. And if everything is perfect, the quadrupole moment would be zero. Okay, and we'll talk about what formula makes that zero. But if everything was perfect, the quadrupole moment would be zero. Okay, if it was perfectly symmetrical. But it's not always perfectly symmetrical. And a lot of times what happens is you end up getting like this like kind of like elliptical pattern. Okay, and the, everything about an ellipse has two foci, foci, foci or foci? Foci? Something. Anyways, <laughs> so the general uh, equation, it looks like this. It's x squared uh, over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one for two dimension. The three-dimensional one, I think you just add a z squared over b. Focus is. <laughs> yep, that's the one. That's how you. That's how you do it right there. That's the. That's the guy. Um. All right. So, the focus is. is, is. Uh, and then the foci are c is equal to the square root of. Uh, I gotta remember, it's a squared minus b squared, a squared minus b squared. So this is kind of like your general, like elliptical surf Earth's object, okay? So these quadrupoles, uh, yeah, if the charges are not straight, then they can have different elliptical shapes and they're not gonna be perfectly spherical. So they'll end up with what's called a quadrupole moment and then you can do certain things with that quadrupole moment. Now, uh, and you see there's like some quadrupole moments that are like listed on the on the board there. Here, let me pull up full screen so you guys can get a better look, and then we'll dive into this in a second. So, uh, so this is, so now you can get a better look at it. These are the, the four charges. Sorry, I didn't realize I was in split screen. We'll go back in a second. But then, uh, this is the ellipse and all of the things that go with it. X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared is equal to one. And that's just general, general ellipse. Okay? And like the three dimensional one, like I said, is just add a, a plus z squared over b squared. I think, pretty sure. Okay. So we can bring that back up and take another look. All right, so then we can see some generalized, like, uh, some generalized quadrupole moments, right? But that's not really exactly what we want to do. So I did manage to dig around and find some reasonable other uh, solutions to this for um, like general physics style. So let me write down some of the formula I found. Uh, and I did it using this obs obscure thing. There we go. But you can find that this is the quadrupole moment of what we're looking at right there. 
this two fifths a squared minus b squared times z. And that's a simplification. Like uh, I found it in this thousands problem, and like they kind of go through all the steps very like uh, one after another. But I'm not gonna bother going through all those steps because uh, I'll put that in chat and you can find it. Um, we're on. This is problem eight. Like these are just different problems. None of these problems were the problems that were your problem. Like they're all separated from that. But it's just a. Uh, did the error out? Did it error? Can someone check that link and let me know if that errored out? Um. But anyway, so this is. It does work its way through it. It was kind of complicated, and like you could go through it step by step if you wanted. But we can sort of like skip all the fluff and get to this. And is I wanted to know, Jax, is this something that you saw like in your textbook or anything? This uh, this Q equals two fifths one. Let's see here. Uh, let's write it down. It's Q is equal to two fifths times Z times A squared minus B squared. Is that something you found in your textbook or anything like that? And uh, basically you just rearrange it and you can find Z, the atomic number, is gonna be five times Q over two times A squared times B squared. Okay, I, cause I don't know if you have to get to this on your own or whatever, but it definitely, this is definitely the, something that you can that will solve it pretty easily. I think, at least. And like I said, I don't. Do you have the answers for this? Uh, I know you're checking your book, but let me know if you have the answers for this too, because it would definitely be helpful to double check that you have the right answers, so that I don't give you the wrong answers. But anyways, this turns out to be 72.9. And it's not a, uh, so we have to round it to 73. It's not, it's, it's, uh, this is, uh, has units of, oops, femtometers squared over femtometers squared. So they cancel away. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, so this is Z. This is the atomic number. So for our for our nuclei, Z is the atom the Z is the 73, and that's the atomic number. So there's another thing that we that I found, uh, and this is sort of just what is the uh, nuclear density where A is the mass number, there it is. So A is the mass number. Uh, why did that be so hard? Was that so hard to find? So we can also find rho is equal to the mass number divided by the volume of the elliptical quadrupole. So the volume of the elliptical quadrupole, you can find the volume of, a, of a, uh, an ellipse to be A, B squared. We could probably just double check that really quick. And then we'll be pretty much ready to solve it. Uh, volume of an ellipse. What's the difference between an ellipsoid? Yeah, four thirds over pi, or four thirds pi ABC. Remember when I said if you have like a nice ellipse like this, the, um, it's going to be, the just the Z is going to be another B squared. So it's A, B, B. That would be for an ellipse. I guess when A, B, and C are different, but our Bs are going to be the same. Which, how do you know that? I don't really know how you're supposed to know that for an atom, but I assume you, I think it's one of the things you can assume. Again, that seems like a chemistry thing. And this is not chemistry office hours. It's not chemistry office hours. Uh, okay, so if we have A is the atomic or the mass number that we can solve for it because we're given everything else too. And for this I got, uh, so this is going to be A 
is equal to, you see still? Yeah. A is equal to rho times, you know, four thirds pi A B squared. And I went ahead and plugged all those numbers for us. So as, because I know you, I know you can run a calculator, so I'm not gonna sit there and, you know, do that right now. Um, oh, I didn't write it down though. It turned out to be 182. <laughs> I don't know. I'm glad I remember that. <laughs> okay, so now we have uh, Z, which is the atomic number, and A, which is the mass number. The atomic number is also, um, but what is the atomic number? Do you know what that is? Like what's special about an atomic number? It's the number of what? <laughs> yes, it does start with a P and end with a roton. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so it's a proton. <laughs> so this is also equal to the number of protons. <clears throat> so the number of protons, so now if you have the number of protons, how do you get to the mass? There's a mass number and then I, I that's just what the, and it's, or maybe I should say the charge. Let's talk about charge. Yeah, not rotons and condensed matter physics. <laughs> right, not rotons and condensed matter physics. Anyways, in order to get to the charge, you have to multiply this by the uh, by the uh, by the electron. So, in order to find the charge, I really don't want to erase my nice, my wife's nice pictures. So we can get rid of the ellipses. For the ellipse. And then we can see that the, uh, anyway, so the charge is going to be Z times E. And then A, we got to be 182. Z, we got to be. 73, whoops. And then the neutrons is just going to be 182 minus 73. I didn't actually do that, so we'll have to figure that out real quick. But it's just going to be what? 109? Yeah, 109. 109. So the neutrons are 109. Let's double check and look at this problem again here. C transition. That's not the problem. So the charge and the atomic mass. So the atomic mass should be 182, right? Or that's the mass number. The atomic mass and the charge, that's the thing that I didn't understand. Aren't they the same thing? Aren't the atomic mass and the charge both given by ZE? Oof, I don't know. That's beyond me. That is beyond me.